So we're inside the school bus. They actually have two school buses here. This one is a start and stall. Uh, no trouble codes. Well, there is one trouble code. Let me show you what that is. Uh, but I don't think it's related. Here, let's see. So that one I set, I just unplugged the cam sensor, but it's setting a generator L terminal circuit, which I'm not really worried about. Um, let's go to our scope. I have, I'm checking ignition coil control and injector control. And here's what it looks like. Here, I can run it, I'll show you what it does. Starts up and stalls out. Okay? And on our scope, let's see, let's zoom in on the vent. So it starts up, yellow trace is injector pulse, green trace is ignition coil control. So let's, let's, see, let's hide these guys. So you can see, you know, they're in sync. We got one injector pulse per ignition event. But right here, something happens and the injectors drop out. So see the injector pulse and then nothing and then the bus stalls out. It's interesting to note that the ignition, you know, the ignition control is still there. But why is the injector dropping out? Your guess is as good as mine. We're gonna try to narrow this down. Okay, just for consistency, I have one more channel. And that is on the other bank of, in uh, of injectors, the rearmost cylinder. So when we turn the key on, we should see the yellow and the blue trace go up to 12 volts, and we do. We start it up, and that's it. Boom. Okay. So what happened there? So you can see the injectors were firing, blue and the yellow, and there's one ignition coil control. Start up, injectors shut off, and the ignition coil kept going. Now we didn't lose the feed, we just lost injector control. And right here, you can see the pulses are, oh come on, something really weird happened. You can kind of fired the injectors randomly, the pulse was really big, and, and that's that. Then they shut off completely, and the engine kept stumbling for a little bit and shut off. So... Hmm, let's make sure we didn't set any other trouble codes. Nope, no trouble codes. <sighs> we also have a fuel pressure gauge set up. Let's see what that does. Prime. So fuel pressure is maintained. Step on the throttle a little bit. Oh, nope. Something weird.
upgrades going on in the fuel pump too. So interesting to note that sometimes the fuel pressure also drops off. So are we dealing with a bad ground somewhere? Here we are in all data, or BBB Industries, sorry. Let's look up this fuel pump control circuit. There's a fuel pump relay, and it's grounded on G102, and power side switched by the PCM. Interesting. Now, The grounds for the PCM, um, let's see, they're all in C1 and C2, and they're at G103. So we have to find this location and check that ground because these Chevy trucks, they, uh, that's a common issue, G103. So test light, from battery positive to a black and white wire down there, just have a piercing probe. So this will check G103 when the bus is running. So keep looking at that light and let's start it up. Still bright, still bright. So not really worried about G103. Alright guys, so we checked our grounds. Those are fine. Now we have to check these four powers. There are two constant powers, B+, red and white, red and white. I won't bore you with the details. I already checked those. Uh, key on, you know, the engine starts up, they'll stay bright, and when, when the engine stalls, they stay bright. Now these two pink wires. One and two. Let's uh, put the key on. So what I do is test light to battery negative, and we have a little piercing probe, just lightly piercing that pink wire. There's our light. I turn the key on. Oh, see how dim that is? And there's stuff going on here. See how, how dim that is? That's very cool. That might be our problem. Let's try again. Key off. Key on. Boom. See how good that is? There it goes out. And it's all out. Let's check the second pink wire. Alright, so that second pink wire. Keys on. Starts up. Staying bright. Looks, looks good. So we are worried about that first pink wire. Let's get back on that guy. Again, I apologize about the shaky camera work, but you know, in the field, fixing the vehicle is more important than setting up a tripod, so I don't have that luxury right now. But let's see. on nothing very very dim okay perfect so that wire is the top so it should be back in the wiring diagram it would be I'm guessing oh let's see 75 or 19 ignition voltage run and start. The other one is accessory, that one's good. So we're worried about PCM ignition one to use 38 at pin 19. So on the fuse box cover, 38, there's a little star next to it, and it's PCM ignition one. So third one up, last row. 15 amp fuse it looks like. Yep, 15 amp. So we'll get, let's get a test light on that 15 amp fuse right there and see what happens. Alright guys, this is super cool. 
two test lights. One on the Fuse 38. It's steady. And see the flicker on the computer wire? Oh no, it's completely gone. So somewhere we have a bad connection. Somewhere. What we could do is bypass it, you know, just take it directly from battery positive to that wire and make sure the bus runs and we'll confirm the problem and then we'll chase the, uh, you know, the open wire or whatever. Well, the proof is in the pudding. We bypassed that power feed and the, the bus runs. All right. Sweet. Now we have to figure out where the problem is between that fuse and that pink wire. So after chasing this open power wire for a little while, I decided to go with the guaranteed fix. Just the jumper wire from here, red wire, right to the computer right there. Nice shrink wrap. That should take care of it. Alright, the fuse box is reinstalled. Let's see if she fires up. Fuel prime. It's running. Is that a win? I think it's a win. Alright. That's it for this one. Catch you guys in the next one.